Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's so good to see you all. Um, I invite you to continue to keep Pastor Luther in in your prayers. He will be returning here next week, and um, he's coming home from um, from Thailand and from two weeks of teaching there. So, um, as I said, please keep him in your prayers for safe returns. And I know he's looking forward to seeing you all when he gets back. Um, I noticed in the bulletin on the 29th, you have a congregational meeting coming up. So please do mark your calendars for that. Make sure that you're here. Some important topics will be discussed, it says, and I'm sure that is the case. Um, Are there any other announcements that anyone would like to bring to the attention of the congregation? All right. Well, with that then, I invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Teach us that without love, your actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit, we may know goodness and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from Acts 11. The apostles and the followers in Judea heard that Gentiles had accepted God's message. So when Peter came to Jerusalem, some of the Jewish followers started arguing with him. They wanted Gentile followers to be circumcised, and they said, you stay in the homes of Gentiles, and you even ate with them. Then Peter told them exactly what had happened. I was in the town of Joppa and was praying when I fell sound asleep and had a vision. 
I saw heaven open and something like a huge sheet held by its four corners came down to me. When I looked in it, I saw animals, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. I heard a voice saying to me, Peter, get up, kill these and eat them. But I said, Lord, I can't do that. I've never taken a bite of anything that is unclean and not fit to eat. The voice came from heaven, spoke to him, spoke to me again. When God says that something can be used for food, don't say it isn't fit to eat. This happened three times before it was all taken back into heaven. Suddenly, three men from Caesarea stood in front of the house where I was staying. The Holy Spirit told me to go with them and not to worry. Then six of the Lord's followers went with me to the home of a man who told us that an angel had appeared to him. The angel had ordered him to send to Joppa for someone named Simon Peter. Then Peter would tell them how he and everyone in his house could be saved. After I started speaking, the Holy Spirit was given to them, just as the Spirit had been given to us at the beginning. I remember that the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. God gave those Gentiles the same gift that he gave us when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So how could I have gone against God? When they heard Peter say this, they stopped arguing and started praising God. They said, God has now let Gentiles turn to him, and he has given life to them. Our psalm for today is Psalm 148. So I'll start out reading, um, and then you'll read responsibly. Shout praises to the Lord. Shout the Lord's praises in the highest heavens. All you of angels and all who serve him above, come and offer praise. Sun and moon and all of you bright stars, come and offer praise. Highest heavens and the water above the highest heavens, come and offer praise. Let all things praise the name of the Lord, because they were created at his command. He made them to last forever, and nothing can change what he has done. All creatures on earth, you obey his commands, so come praise the Lord. Sea monsters in the deep sea, fire and hail, snow and frost, and every stormy wind, come praise the Lord. All mountains and hills, fruit trees and cedars. Every wild and tame animal, all reptiles and birds, come praise the Lord. Every king and every ruler, all nations on earth. Every man and every woman, young people and old, come praise the Lord. All creation, come praise the name of the Lord. Praise his name alone. The glory of God is greater than heaven and earth. Like a bull with mighty horns, The Lord protects his faithful nation Israel because they belong to him. Shout praises to the Lord. Our second reading is from Revelations 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared, and so had the sea. Then I saw new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down from God in heaven. It was like a bride dressed in her wedding gown and ready to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice shout from the throne. God's home is now with his people. He will live with them and they will be his own. Yes, God will make his home among his people. He will wipe all tears from their eyes and there will be no more death, suffering, crying, or pain. These things of the past are gone forever. Then the one sitting on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Write down what I have said. My words are true and can be trusted. Everything is finished. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will freely give water from the life-giving fountain to everyone who is thirsty. The Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Please stand as you're able.
Our Holy Gospel for today comes from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. Glory to you, O Lord. After Judas had gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man will be given glory, and he will bring glory to God. Then after God is given glory because of him, God will bring glory to him, and God will do it very soon. My children, I will be with you for only a little while longer. Then you will look for me, but you won't find me. I tell you, just as I told the people, you cannot go where I am going. But I am giving you a new command. You must love each other, just as I have loved you. If you love each other, everyone will know that you are my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Love. Love is a prominent theme in music, and this week the song, Love Can Build a Bridge, was on my mind. It was recorded years ago by a country duo called The Judds. And it was one of the songs used at the National Youth Gathering in 2015. And on that evening in Detroit, 30,000 Lutheran youth and adults put their arms on each other's shoulders and swayed together, singing, Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? It was powerful and it was hopeful. Another song that's been on my mind this week is Huey Lewis and the News is That's the Power of Love. This is the song that was playing as my niece and her husband exited their wedding ceremony. Some of the lyrics are, you don't need money, you don't need fame, but you know what to do when it gets a hold of you, and with a little help from above, You feel the power of love. Love does have power. But it's not the kind of power that most people crave. Love's power was contrary to what the people in Jesus' time, and some people even today, prefer prefer to have. Those who significantly change or influence culture have been glorified throughout history. Those who have such powers are not always using their power for selfless reasons. Today, there are social media influencers who share their likes, dislikes, trends, or experiences in hopes of getting followers. There is an inherent power of having a lot of followers. And what these influencers promote is not always healthy or productive to the lives of others. But for many, there is an underlying goal. Popularity on the internet means a revenue stream. It's big business. So they can achieve fame and wealth as they pursue others with their importance. Then there are others who take it to a pure evil level, promoting hate, as we saw yesterday in the shooting in New York City. It was a tragedy, and we condemn that. The desires for fame and glory prevailed in Jesus' day, too. The leader of the day, Caesar, was hailed as a hero and glorified for conquering others and for leading the Roman people into a time of prosperity and national acclaim. He and others were the winners in society, and they were praised. Culture then, like now, glorified wealth and glamour and accomplishments over humility and service. So when Jesus says God is given glory because of him, God is glorified by the things Jesus is doing. God's glory is Jesus' service. God's glory is Jesus' embodiment of humility, kindness, and compassion, all representative of God's love. 
The glory that Jesus proclaims opposes the glory that John's readers would have reserved for powerful leaders like Caesar. Love was the power of Jesus. Jesus demonstrates love in the Gospels. He demonstrates love so humbly in the verses just before today's passage. In John 13, 1 through 15, which is a passage that's read every Monday, Thursday during Holy Week. And in those verses, Jesus is eating his final meal with his disciples. He puts a towel around his waist, and with a basin of water and a cloth, he washes the disciples' feet. It's dramatic. From a societal standard, there is no power, no status in that activity. But as followers of Christ, we see something very powerful, selfless, loving service. And we heard Jesus say, God is glorified through Jesus. So God is glorified in Jesus' acts of love. Jesus also talks a lot about love in the Gospels. He leads us into this series of lessons on love with this passage from today's reading. It was, you must love each other just as I have loved you. If you love each other, everyone will know that you are my disciples. This was the new commandment. Then in chapter 14, verse 15, he says, if you love me, you will do as I command, referring back to loving others. And in 15.9, he says, I have loved you just as my Father has loved me, so remain faithful to my love for you. And in 15.12 and 13, he says, now I tell you to love each other as I have loved you. The greatest way to show love for friends is to die for them. Jesus repeatedly teaches his disciples about love. This is where things get a little difficult, though, for us. We know that Jesus went to the cross for us to show us how much God loves us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And that kind of love for us, when we know we are perfectly unworthy of it, can be difficult to first wrap our minds around and second, try to emulate as we are commanded. Wrapping our minds around that amazing love takes a lot of trust. There are a million reasons I could share with you that could preclude me from God's love, ways I've messed up, sins I've committed, and there are probably a million more that I didn't even notice when I did them. But the great thing is, God doesn't keep a scorecard on us. Now that doesn't mean we should belittle God's grace by doing just as we please as an expression of our free will. It means that since our God's love and grace are such fantastic gifts, we are to share the blessings of our lives and our faith with others in a celebration, in a glorification of God. We glorify God by living into the command to love others as Jesus loves us. And the cross we are called to go to is Jesus' cross, and at the foot of it, we are granted forgiveness because we are loved that much. It's a difficult thing to wrap our minds around if we're being honest about our sinful lives. And for that reason, I think a lot of people feel that their level of unworthiness is greater than God's ability to forgive. But that's not what we learn from Jesus. Jesus tells us that God the Father loves us, and to glorify God is to not achieve some level of accomplishment, but rather to humbly love and serve one another just as Jesus did. And then we come to the second difficult part of emulating Jesus as we are commanded to. Because love is serving and welcoming everyone into God's love. 
It can be hard to love our neighbors. It can be hard to love some family members. It can be hard to love any number of people in our lives and in the world. And when I was thinking about how divisive our world is, it's troubling. There's divisions in our country, in our families these days. And I know for most of it, it for most of us, it can be hard for us to truly love someone who is opposite from our expectations or who doesn't see the things the way we see them. And we may find ourselves just tolerating people. And by tolerating, I mean that we accept them for who they are or what they do, so long as we don't have to make any efforts to interact with them or change anything we do because of them. That isn't loving. That isn't compassion. And that isn't Jesus. Because Jesus didn't just tolerate Mary Magdalene or Peter or the woman at the well or the thief on the cross beside him. He loved them. Jesus' example of love is one that we are commanded to live into. It is hard. It is hard because loving like Jesus makes us extremely vulnerable to rejection and heartbreak. But loving like Jesus, despite our vulnerability, can also change the course of someone's life. Look at how Jesus, who came as a small, vulnerable baby into this world and later subjected himself to the vulnerability on the cross, all in the name of love. Look at how that changed our world. Jesus did that. God did that. Love did that. There are a lot of things that you and I cannot change with our love. But there are a lot of things that we can. To start with, let's trust that when Jesus said, God loves us, he meant each of us and all of our neighbors. To believe in God's love is a power that can change the world and bring new life to hurting people. And let's not hesitate to serve with humble love those who are in need. It is in our actions of love that others will see that we are followers of Christ. Kindness, compassion, concern, all give way to acts of love. Be Jesus for one another and for all of those around you. Love them as he loves you. Amen. Let's pray together. Merciful and glorious God, our hearts are overwhelmed with knowing that you love us, each of us. We want our lives to reflect that love. We pray for your guidance that we see and respond to the opportunities that we can share love with others. Keep us always in your care as we continue to learn and grow in your love. Amen. Please stand.
Let us now confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of the resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive your gifts in those we least expect. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us towards more deliberate care of your world you have made. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experiencing despair and great need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Place holy love at the center of all our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism in our churches and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Teach us the value of each person's identity and bless us with a shared identity as your children, kindred of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you now to share the peace with one another. I hope on your way in today you picked up one of the communion packets. Um, If you did not, feel feel free to step out and grab one of those now. These communion elements have been consecrated at a previous service by Pastor Luther. If you're not familiar with the packets, the easiest way to open them is just to press down on the little tab, pull back the cellophane, and then um, pull back the foil wrapper, and that will get you to the grape juice. Um, We will share together in the meal following the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in praise, and you welcome us all to the table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all the creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. our congregation last gathered for the holy celebration of Holy Communion, we heard again the story of God's mighty acts and the love shown us in the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed bread, he gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to all, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you. Do this also for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat. The body of Christ is given for you. and the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life. In Jesus' name, amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Go in peace, tell what God has done.